I'm not the first person to rank these raids, and I sure won't be the last. But some people do like me doing these and hearing my thoughts on stuff. So let me give my takes on the Savage Pandemonium raids. With one unfortunate note, I do not have any surviving footage of the first tier, so you won't be able to see me being a Reaper main. Apologies for that. To make it up to you, for P1, I got you footage of a very bad tank. Otherwise, enjoy the video. Please leave a rating, comment, subscribe, or follow my Patreon. And now, time for my hot takes. Asphodelos, the first circle. Eric is the punching bag of the Pandemonium series. Some of his mechanics people ended up just completely negating their existence. Some of the mechanics are just the same as in normal. He's got a good handle on tank busters, though. The fight is hard enough for a first one, I'd say. Especially when you consider Party Finder of all things started adopting a tank damage down strat because adjusting for stoplights was too much for all of them to handle. Having to do that mechanic during openers was also pretty crazy on Reaper. The first fight of essentially every raid tier since Stormblood has been super easy. There's the literally cleared in one pull alt right. Eden was pretty basic and boring. Eric being this difficulty level? He's fine, he's fine. People give him so much worse time than he really deserves. It's a pretty boring fight at best, but it's the first fight of the expansion. It's my conspiracy theory that this is intentional. Make the first fight stupidly easy for a false sense of security. This leads people who might not otherwise try raiding end up clearing and learning so much more in the process. Maybe they get walled once the fights start getting hard, but maybe they get confidence and fall into raiding properly for their own enjoyment. As far as that goal, I feel like Eric very much hits the mark. It's not a great fight, but neither was Eden, neither was Alt Roy. It does its job. It's a low B, high C. We'll see how I rate the other fights first of where it ultimately ends up. As for Delos, the second circle, Hippocampus is a pretty fun fight. Its mechanics are pretty varied for the most part and is a good step up over Eric. It's kind of annoying how touching the water gives you false hope of surviving, basically. But I mean, just get good, right? I feel like it's at this point everyone starts being weird with everything is limit cut, even though they're very different mechanics. This one is the closest you get to being actually limit cut. Overall, though, this is just a bog standard savage fight. Again, it's the first tier, so we can't really compare this to Anabasios fights, but we can compare it to any other first tier. I'd say this hits that mark. Though at the same time, I distinctly remember my group getting to the point where laziness set in. The final mechanic kept killing us for reasons, and it became a matter of killing the boss before it goes off, or we die. Mentally, I just kept thinking, just do the mechanic right. But that's not really the fight's fault. The different ways you had to stack and spread were just good fun. I overall don't have much to say about it due to it being two years ago. High B, lower A. As for Delos, the third circle, Phoenix is a good fight. The ad phase is a bit of a cluster truck, but that's about my only complaint about it. Every mechanic was tough, very different, and had almost no reuse until the very end. The intro phase could be argued to be a tutorial section, but it's not really given how the rest of the fight plays out. Having to watch for which orbs the boss used for stack or spread, and then remembering to do it again the second time around. The limit cut that isn't limit cut. While Elmo Strat kind of took hold quickly, I even liked the fire tornadoes. Mostly. The final part of the tornadoes was kind of really annoying. I really like how the teeth were used as both a thing you had to face outward and inward for different reasons. Dread Rebirth also hit super hard in a way I thought was pretty funny. This was very much a hard fight, and I greatly appreciated it. I would also like to note though, I am not colorblind. All the complaints of orange on orange and all that, I had none of them as a non-colorblind person. This is my list, so I'm not going to dock at points when it didn't negatively affect my personal experience. Given how many people complained about it, it's pretty clear it did affect a large number of people. This is important to keep in mind, and isn't to discount that experience. A tier. As for Delos, the fourth circle, phase one. I hate Pinax. I hate how much of the fight was based around Pinax. It even repeats later, when the fight is already very short. The ore mechanic is a neat element to have to deal with in combination with the panels, but the panels alone is boring at best, frustrating at worst. I really like how the fight opens, though. Having to keep track of who gets the weaknesses, grabbing the rots and tethers. It's simple, but fun to keep track of. Combining it with the towers is a neat addition. I'm in two minds for the shifts, though. 
The having to read the cast bar is fine, but I don't feel it's enough of a difference. At most, it makes for a bit of an uptime challenge. Though the more I think on it, the less I feel this fight does. It does less than Eric, I even feel. When it's new and exciting, it seems like so much more, but when you're thinking back on it, it's kind of just there. I didn't like a bunch of it, really liked some of it, but it's... I guess it's fine as a door boss. It's fine? C tier. It's kind of just whatever. As for Delos, the fourth circle, phase two. Why doesn't the music change? I'm actually one of the people who isn't crazy about Hicks Vent Leona's, so having to listen to it for two phases was not something I was excited for. I'm glad Sokin is willing to experiment and do different things and have misses like this. I'd rather there being some tracks I dislike because it makes the amazing stuff even better. Anyway, the fight itself is actually pretty fun. Act 2 is just a bit of a jerk and I wish it wasn't. The other acts though, I really like them. They're all completely different ways of using the towers that also mixes in other mechanics too. Act 1 is the tutorial, but still requires you to slightly pay attention to which one is first. Act 2 is the jerk that is the real wall of the fight. Act 3 is dealing with the boss doing a lot of his own things at the same time with jumps and earth shakers. Act 4 is simple to do, but is the most use your eyes of the fight. This one is more of the pure puzzle part of the fight than on execution, even if execution is still required. Compared to Act 2, which was a puzzle to solve, but remains high on execution. Finale is just counting, but some people don't like counting. It does at least have enough attention required to get to your nail and then your spot to soak. Then Encore goes on way too long. Why does it happen twice? It's a simple mechanic, but tough enough mechanic. It's a bit weird if you get bad conal AoE patterns. Mostly this is a vibe check, kind of like how ultimates often end but like even less mechanically intensive than ultimates. The focus very much was on a heal and mid check otherwise. Looking back, I do like this fight, but it's not something I would be chomping at the bit to go back into. So let's shove this into A tier. Now we get back to the point where I have footage to look back over, though given they're more recent than Asphodelos, I need less of that to remember how a fight works. Plus I actually made guides for Abyssos, Abyssos, the fifth circle, and our good friend, Angry Carby. Overall, this fight feels kind of slow, but I really like the mechanics. A good balance of both mechanics where you have to avoid a crystal explosions and turn specific crystals into poison. Tail to Claw mixed in, a unique two-part tank buster with both magical and physical hits, Venom Squall and Surge for a change of pace. Thinking on it, the fight does a lot of using cast bar names to good effect. Venom Pool alone tells you a pattern needs you to remove crystals even on your first attempts. Stuff gets combined in different enough ways that the mirror mechanic doesn't get old. But of course, then there's Stomp. Oh boy, I don't know how this mechanic was such a wall for people, but all I heard was how much of a wall it is. All you do is rotate around in the middle, and there's even enough time to blind react. There was only two patterns, and instead we got the weird corner strat, and I'm just so confused. It's not a mechanic I look back on fondly, easy or not. Oh, thinking about it, I wasn't too keen on Double Rush either. Even if all you had to really do was hit arm's length to survive. So while I greatly enjoy the fight, it does have a bit of a slow feeling. It's overall not, there's very little downtime between mechanics, but the puddle mechanics resolve slowly, stomp exists, but I like it. A tier. Abyssos the Sixth Circle. One of the fights we really clown on probably more than we should, but god if it doesn't deserve most of it. This fight definitely is slow and only really is a puzzle fight in its near entirety. Kachexia is the only point where you really have to execute a lot, and a little bit of it for Dark Sphere with nails. Every nail pattern boils down to a singular nail mattering. It was to the point that I was constantly saying I feel the normal mode is harder than Savage. Like obviously Savage hits way harder, has actual tank busters, and more involved mechanics overall. Dealing with the radio AoEs just felt way harder to me. Even re-watching my footage, I can call out to myself what the one specific nail that matters is, and what the safe spot is as a result. There's definitely some credit this fight deserves that we don't give it. You do still need to do the mechanics, the few mechanics that are hard to do have the potential to kill you, and you do have to pay attention to which parasite you have. But it's like, yeah, D tier really is where this belongs. Abyssos, the seventh circle, we have a tree. I will repeat what I said in my guide. 
This is when the boss actually starts trying to kill you. That part is like, seven minutes in? Like, a lot of the mechanics I do feel are good or fun, but it's largely a puzzle fight. Execution is near non-existent until that point. Pagation is the beginning of the fight, and uptime strat kind of ruined that. It hurts so damn much still, but the movement and mechanics are free. But then the harvest start, and it's near non-stop. Even without uptime strats, the tough puzzles with difficult positioning. Then she just gives up again. Like, I get that she's a tree, and I can't imagine trees are very fast if they are given the ability to move. It's not completely worthless of a fight, but it definitely belongs in D tier. Abyssos, the Eighth Circle, Phase 1. I actually don't like this one. Like, I can acknowledge it's a good fight, but I don't like it at all. There's some really good positioning required at points, with reacting and watching cast bars required at many points. It does everything that a good savage fight should do, in theory. Gorgons, especially Gorgons 2, just is not enjoyable. I like the flexing required, it's good practice for top. It just rubs me the wrong way for some reason. Chthonic Vent also just feels like RNG in the worst way. If you get the wrong pattern, it just feels awful to perform. The bright side is it's short because it's a door boss. No wait, no it's not! It's nearly 8 minutes long! This fight is so long and draining! That's without even bothering to care about the DPS check issues and all that. This fight is just a pain to do, and a pain to reclear when getting back to phase 2. It really just doesn't feel good to me. So for this one, I'm stuck in the middle of my distaste for the fight overall, but the obvious quality it generally has. The boring music also doesn't help. So I'm going to stick it in C tier. Pray I do not revise the contract any further, and left what is a mid fight in a mid rating. Abyssos the Ace Circle Phase 2 also belongs in C tier. High concept carries the fight. When the downtime pure puzzle mechanic is the high point of your fight, you kind of need a second draft. The fire and ice part of natural alignment is neat enough with the movement and flexing required. It's not a high enough point to make the fight fun though. Limitless Desolation? Why is this here? Dominion is just weird and they have you do it twice in a row. It's really neat how you have to make Phoenix to survive into the final phase, but I'd have rather just do a third round of natural alignment or something. I really don't like this fight. High concept is the only part I look back on fondly. Carby was the absolute high point of the tier, and the rest of it was just bad. Even taking into how I was feeling a level of burnout that tier, I would not enjoy it any better in a good and happy mindset. It's just bad. I even went back in to help a friend in Party Finder at points during Anabasios. Still hated P8. I will continue to hate it. Anabasios, the Ninth Circle, is our first S rank fight. This fight does it all, while only being the first fight of the tier. The one meant to be the easiest of the tier still ends up having amazing pacing and mechanical variety. Multiple types of tank busters, a fun downtime mechanic, uptime is constantly interesting. The fight unfortunately has to start repeating itself come the 8 minute mark, but by then you're pushing at enrage. Up until then, even repeated mechanics are changed up with what else is combined with. The second, everything is limit cut, is completely different to the first one. Dual spells combo well with basically everything. Maybe it deserves to only go into A rank, but this fight is what I genuinely enjoyed doing. Plus the music grew on me. I really jammed this one. Anabasios, the 10th circle. F tier. I was very tempted to end it there and move right into the next fight. Not explain myself, leave the fact that this fight is terrible to be the only needed explanation. But I figured people would not be satisfied and I'd get way too many comments about it. So let's get the same number of comments from people telling me I'm wrong. This is the worst fight in the entire game's history. Absolutely nothing about this fight is salvageable, and that's the baseline. Some parts are even worse, like the web bridges. They're tiny and overly precise. And in PF, scholars like to use expedient when you're going over them, which is a morally evil thing to do. Expedient, the worst skill in the game, makes worst fight in the game even worse. The tower lasers? I've never seen people complain about a mechanic more than those tethers. Cursed towers? I dealt with cursed meteors in Drew for long enough, and for as much as I think this fight is way too overly precise, 
Cursed Towers isn't even close to that. Yet apparently it feels awful enough to count as cursed. Maybe because the mechanic already feels terrible, cursed just feels that much worse. Bonds 3? What the hell is with the precision of all of this? There is so little wiggle room, you have to be moving the moment the snapshot hits or you're too slow. Top is less strict than that. And Harrowing Hells? Jesus Christ, why does this hit harder than anything else in this tier? I don't fear the healing of any other part of this tier. In this entire raid series, it's just this one part. Obviously, yes, it's a mitt check. Don't overmit the mechanics beforehand, but good god, this does not feel like this is the right amount of damage. My faint only does so much. Oh, and the tank buster towers, the tank towers. Predation in the weapon's refrain has a bigger spot to stand in. I have seen tank after tank after tank soar into the bottomless pit because the precision needed is apparently that stupidly tight. Party Finder is how I did these fights, and they make it even worse. I already don't like this fight. Give me a top tier world first team and I'll still put it in F. Put me in PF and it's below F tier. It's triple F RKO out of nowhere low. You have to do single platform or you will die from lack of heals. There's like four ways to do the first mechanic and people still mess them up constantly. People misreading buffs even with someone calling them out in chat. This is the only fight I ended up skipping for reclears when I was still doing them. I started skipping it because people couldn't do it and I was not having any fun with it at all. I was completely tilted just having to do it. The only positive I can give the fight is that it's not just a basic arena. They did more with it. But even that came with an asterisk. Even that wasn't a full positive. Give us different arena shapes. Do more with arenas. Experiment. This one isn't it. I'm basically alone in this opinion, but I'd rather go back to E9S, a fight that gave me literal anxiety attacks. I would rather do any other fight in this game than ever, ever come back to this damn biblically accurate angel. So who wants to take a guess of how many people are going to go L take without the foresight to stop looking into their mirrors? Anabasios the 11th Circle is a very solid fight with some issues. B tier. This is a linear upgrade to E11S, Evil Thancred. Evil Thancred was kind of just annoying to do, especially with Sundered Sky or whatever it's called. The weirdest, most pointless downtime in any fight. Themis here doesn't do that. His mechanics all have a level of attention required, and they're fun to perform. Dark and Light is a really unique way of combining everything into one big mechanic. The unfortunate fact of this fight, though, is that the real only big mechanic. Each individual mechanic is neat, but nothing else comes close. Letter of the Law is fine, but it's not quite the level of Dark and Light. Most of the rest of the fight is the same two mechanics repeated over and over. When the Ninth Circle did it, it was with Dual Spell, but Dual Spell always was used in a different way. Outside of a few major mechanic points, it's just the mechanics repeated. Those mechanics are nice, but I wish there were more of them. It's a fun fight, but lacking in the variety, very much so. So, confident B tier. Anabasios, the 12th Circle, Phase 1. The Architect of Our Demise. Athena has an absolutely amazing boss theme I can't get enough of, and has such variety in all of her mechanics. While still only being a door boss, each paradigma is completely different, each Super Chain Theory has completely different movement and combinations of mechanics. The absolutely only issue with this fight is the first paradigma. People seemingly could not understand how it worked and the movement required to clear it. Even with everyone defaulting to the tank strat, the tank still didn't understand what they were doing. They'd stand outside of her hitbox when they want to be slightly inside. This is because the angels are proximity based. One of them is closer to the middle, so being so far away from the middle makes it sometimes go smack the entire party instead. Stand inside the hitbox. And that's a fault of players, not the fight. The fact you can cheese it with tank invulns at all is neat. People say that doing the Dragoon opener during Super Chain Theory is apparently super tough. Hard to disagree. It's just super fun. Dragoon works so well in this fight. 
Limit Cut is Everything is the real final wall of the fight. If you don't have someone use Expedient, it's really not that bad. It's precise as hell, but when under your own movement speed, it's easy to get up to the wall and move as you need. Much as PF made this fight hell, the fight itself is just so enjoyable. S tier, S tier, S tier, best fight in Pandemonium, one of my favorite fights in the entire game. Anabasios the 12th Circle Phase 2 is contrasted with being extremely dull. It's a fight that has more visually going on than it does actual gameplay-wise. Geocentrism is kinda nothing, classical elements is matching shapes, though Palladian Ray and its placement makes for a good level of dodging needed. I will say that I was a proponent of A North B South strat the moment I saw this mechanic. You know what PF has recently adopted? A North B South. God, people never cease to amaze. Crush Helm is just learning when to time in Essena. It's different at least, I'll give it that. But then we have Caloric. This is the most finicky feeling mechanic in the entire game, yet it expects precision. I never feel confident when performing this one, even if it's not my fault if we die. I know the mechanic, I understood it quick enough, I just have zero comfort with it. Pangenesis is what walls every PF for some reason, and is the mechanic that shows auto markers with top have gone too far. This is literally the same mechanic as the Phase 3 transition, but harder. Yet PF doesn't use markers here. People in Ultimate PF really are that bad, huh? It is a pretty difficult mechanic to be honest, but not the mistakes made. The three sets of towers all resolve pretty quickly, but boy if it doesn't take the wind out of your sails when you're going for clears, and this is what happens over and over. Caloric 2 is kind of weird. It should be completely free, especially once people figured out the static position strat. Yet somehow going in a circle was too much? I'm not sure what the intended solution for this mechanic is, since this just feels like the correct solution anyway? And with that solution, it's just free. Walk in two straight lines and don't greed your opener. Geocentrism 2 at least has some neat stuff going on. Combining the chain and the spinny puddle bit is actually cool. Making your partner block lasers for you for the second part is more interesting than just dodging them. Overall though, it's just not that engaging. Boring music, boring fight, I was going to put it into C tier, but nah, D tier. It's just not a good time. Yeah, this looks very different to any other of these you've seen, I bet. I am always going to be of my own mind, my own opinions. Whether people like my opinions or not, I'm keeping them. Whether you respect them or not, that just makes you the asshole. You aren't gonna get me to change my mind. Anyway, I hope this was enjoyable for people. I've gotten multiple requests to rank more stuff, and walk a dungeons especially, Maybe I'll handle that before Dawn Trail, but as a raider I felt it was more, let's say, relevant to rate these raids now. Now we're heading into Dawn Trail and luckily Abyssos is going to melt. Unlocking ultimates will be very free. Well, relatively. I'm hoping the NVIDIA GTX 3070 raid series is going to be super cool and unique. We're heading into a new era of the game and I can only hope it's a good one. Let's all look forward to it. Take care and may the power of an Anidhog slay waste to your enemies.